So I've covered a lot of advanced robot vacuum cleaners, but none of them have this really handy feature, which this Nawal Frio does. It's called AI Dirt Sense, and what this does is detect the level of dirtiness in the water and decide whether it needs to continue mopping a certain area or not. So imagine it's your kitchen, which is a little more dirty than other areas. Well, it'll go over it again, thanks to this feature. Or maybe the entrance of your house, which has got a little bit more dirt than the rest of the house, it will clean that and mop that. So the mops, they spin at 180 RPM. They apply 12 newtons of pressure and it has carpet detection sensor. So when it detects there's carpet, it'll increase the suction performance up to 3000 PA but it will also lift up those mops, 12 millimeters, so they're not gonna be dragged over your nice clean rugs or carpets. Once it's done it's clean, it'll go back into the auto clean station right here, it'll rinse those mops out, clean them, and proceed to dry them with warm air, hot air, so it will not get any bacteria on there and those mops won't smell. The auto clean station does have a clean water tank, dirty water tank, and it auto distributes to the cleaning solution for that water. So inside the box with our Frio, you will find our two mops, two side sweeping brushes, user manual, and some lemon and basil floor cleaner. So looking at the underside here of the Frio, we do have the mop setup that is a little bit different. Notice how that there are triangular shaped these mops, and that means that they're uh, overlapping here. There's no gap in the middle, so this is going to get that full coverage when it's mopping. Now each one of these mops spins at 180 RPM, and it does apply 12 newtons of pressure to the floor, so it's basically going along the scrubbing. Now it does have a 360 degree wheel here at the rear, we normally see that at the front. At the front we do have a carpet detection sensor, other sensors, infrared, so the cliff sensors which are typical can detect falls. And the main brush here, this is what I like about this unit here, is it does have bristles still. Recent vacuums that I've been reviewing, Robot Vax, have just been using all rubber. Now the rubber's great for not getting hairs tangled up in it, but it's not very good at lifting up hair and other dust. I find the combination of the rubber sweepers and the brush that we do have with this particular model here is the best bet. Now if you've got hard floors, you're worried about them getting scratched, or you've got a lot of hair in your household, long hair that is, you can still get the optional rubber brush here for this. Now you can see we've got our two side sweeper brushes, a little different from other designs. As you can see that each of those has two sets of bristles when we typically see three. So slightly different from other brands. The wheels allow the Frio to be able to tackle climbs of up to 20 millimeters. Now the material used with these triangular mops, this is a microfiber cloth material they're using and it's supposed to be about two times wetter than your typical kind of material. Now they are very easy to remove these mops, you just lift them up like that, it's magnets that hold them into place and they do use Velcro on the other side to keep that mop in place there securely. So later on for maintenance when you do need to remove and replace these with newer ones, you can simply just pull them off like so. The Frio does have one of those must-have features for a robot mopping vacuum, and that is mop lift. So these mops here, they lift up 12 millimeters, and that ensures it's not being dragged over the top of carpets. Either side of the Frio, we do have our charging contact points. So that's when it goes back into the auto clean station where it will charge. And you see there's a sensor on the side, so that's how it can get as close as possible to walls. And it does have that edge swing feature that I'll talk a little bit about later on when I get onto just how it cleans. But what that does is it swings around and it gets those mops right into the very edge to clean as best as possible. Right up the front of the vacuum, it's got an object avoidance sensor and it's using LiDAR here. So that is super accurate mapping. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on with the application about how it maps out. It does have multi-floor support and your typical sensor here at the front too. So if it knocks into say some furniture, it will detect that and it will go back. And there is a rubber lip around the front here to stop it damaging the legs of chairs and tables. The dustbin capacity with the Frio is very good at 480 milliliters. To access it, you just need to lift up the back here and pull it out. There's just a little tab there. It lifts out like so, and it's very easy to empty. There's just this button here to push, and the whole bottom will fall out, and that dust can be emptied into your dustbin. It does use these washable and replaceable filters. Along the top there is this power button, so you can press this, just a single tap, and it will start to clean the whole house. Press and hold it for three seconds, and it will turn on or off the vacuum. 
The Frio's runtime is 180 minutes. It does take two and a half hours to fully charge, and the suction performance is 3000 PA maximum. And our base station. So this is an auto clean station. This is where we'll go back and clean and rinse out those mops and dry them with hot air. This is of course where it will go back to charge and it does not have an auto empty feature for the dustbin. But one great feature that a lot of models are lacking and they should really have is this, that the washboard is very easy to remove and clean for maintenance. I'll show you. You just need to pull it out like so and you can even lift this part out to clean that and that just makes life so much easier. Unlike other brands which this is all fixed, you can't even slide it out like this, making cleaning and general maintenance a lot more difficult. There's even the option to plumb in a clean water supply and wastewater. If you remove this little tab on the back, you've got those two connections there. And if you have that set up, that means you don't need to fill it up with the clean water or worrying about emptying the wastewater. It'll all be done from here. One feature I really like about it is it's got this touch display and a really nice color screen. This means if you're not someone that's really up with their mobile phones, you don't want to run the application where well, you can do it all from here. So we have our Freo mode that's got the dirt sense, edge sweep, you can just launch that straight away. Or if you want, you can select to vacuum, then mop afterwards. Vacuum and mop at the same time. You've got just vacuum or just mop. These are the modes you can do with just the screen here swiping. And swiping down, we get a lot of different settings. So you have the brightness of the screen that you can adjust, the volume, network, wash the mops uh, and dry them, which is great because you're not gonna have them smelling because it'll dry them out properly. But if you need to run that again, you've got that option. Cleaner here, so I've got that installed. I'll show you that shortly. Maintenance, you can view that. Child lock, do not disturb mode power dry mode here, language, rebuild your map, here a new device, system updates, system version right there, and even the help center. So really all of those key things from the application, they're all here and you can just use this fantastic large touch screen, which by the way, works really well. You can see it does not lag and the touch response is good. Lifting up the lid is where you will find our dirty water tank and the clean water tank. So the clean water tank, this is larger, that's 4.5 litres. Dirty water is 4.05 litres. And our floor cleaner, well, that just goes in the front here. It's pretty snug fit and it fits in there quite nicely. And once you push that into place, you can then insert the water tank, which I will just do now. So that fits in there. Now you normally have to empty the dirty water tank about two times less than you do the clean water. The clean water is what it will go through a lot quicker because that's what's using to rinse those mops and then wet them, of course, when it goes around cleaning. And another great design choice is unlike some of the other models, again, that I have covered, it does have handles either side, making it a lot easier to move this base station around. So it will do that initial map first. So it'll go around into all of the rooms that are available to it that have doors open map them out first, builds up that very accurate LiDAR, so that's your laser mapping there, map and then proceed to do its clean. Now, when it is vacuuming and mopping at the same time too, by the way, it does a very efficient job at that. So it's a systematic clean that it will do the edges first, and if it's in the mop mode, if you get it to mop or vacuum and then later mop, in the Frio mode too, it will do what is called the edge swing. So that goes around cleaning the edges really well too, mind you. You can see how it's different what it does. It simply just doesn't go along in a straight line, but it turns itself, getting those mops right into the edges, which is great. So for the carpet clean test that I did, it's my standard test here. I put down, it's a little bit unrealistic, I know, but huge amounts of dust, cat fur, long hair. Now all of the robot vacuums that I've been testing out recently are using rubber brushes, just the silicon brush, that's it, and no bristles. But this has the sweepers and the bristles, and boy, does it do a much better job. You can see here with my cleaning test, which by the way, I've sped this up. On the second pass, it got pretty much everything. It just left behind two little bits, and I calculated that it's around about 95% or so of the dust that it did pick up, which is really good. It's definitely over 90%, so very thorough, good cleaning for that. And when you look at the contents of that dustbin, then it's just, well, it speaks for itself. Look at how dirty that is. It just picks up so much, so much better at collecting the hairs than just a rubber only brush, which by the way, you can get for this model too. It's an optional brush. 
And then where its strength really lies is in the mopping performance. So it applies that 12 newtons of pressure, the mop spin at 180 RPM. And because they've got that triangular yet curved design to them, they're interweaving, interlapping there that they don't leave a gap in the middle when it mops. And I found the mopping performance to be excellent, really good around the house. So my white floors with again the edge sweeping mode and just the general mopping that it does have looked really good. So for my mopping test, this is again unrealistic really, it's a very demanding test. I mixed with my own special brew, coffee with a lot of dirt and I spread a teaspoon on these two tiles here, let it set and then I did actually dry it with a hair dryer. So it's baked on, it's caked on there, unrealistic probably. And you'll see when it goes over at the first pass, it gets almost everything, it leaves just a little bit of the very stubborn baked on stains there of the coffee and the dirt. But on the second pass, again, it pretty much got everything apart from maybe one or two little specks that it left. But this exceeds what I've seen from other mops. This happens to be one of the best when it comes to mopping performance. So the mops, when you look at them after these kind of cleans, they are very dirty. You can see here. And what I did is I put them back into the machine, got it to clean the mops and let it dry them out. And this is the end result here. Now you can see they look white again and they are bone dry. It cleaned them out and not only made them look white again, but just perfectly dry. There's no moisture to them. So you don't have to worry about them later on smelling at all. So it cleaned those mops really well, dried them really well. And then when you look at the wastewater, again here, the results speak for themselves. That wastewater was very dirty with a lot of, a little bits of grime and whatnot too, as well in the water when I tipped it out. And how loud is the Frio? So when it's mopping, it's 49 decibels and then vacuuming only 59. So it is quite a quiet robot vacuum compared to the competitors. Here's a sample of it in action. And here is our application. So yes, it does send you, of course, notifications and it's called Nawal Frio. So just like the robot vacuum itself, you do need to create an account, sign into it, and you'll see that when you first load it up that you can jump into the robot. You see a quick glance here, the battery life, what it's doing at the moment, which is washing the mop because I'm currently doing a bit of a clean. And this is the map right here. So when you look at this map, you can see that it's already cleaned a few of the areas so far. You do have a 3D version of it. If you do prefer that, you can run that. Um, I'm just happy with 2D. I think that makes it really nice and clear, but you know, personal preference, of course, there. So it tells you the time left or what it's doing there at the moment. You can see that's been running now for 21 minutes, almost 22, and it's 20% into uh, washing the mop there, which uh, will take like a minute or two or so just to rinse that, wash it, re-wet it, and then it'll go back out on the clean. Now you can end the task here, which I'm currently doing at the moment, which I don't want to end it, but while that is going on, I'll just show you quickly the maps. So you have multi-map support, you can edit them, you've got no-go zones, uh, you can set the type of floor you have, so tiled floor, cobblestone, hardstone floor, uh, it's very good. There's a lot of things you can edit and change in here. So it's typical of, a, well, a good app that you'd want, of course, with a robot vacuum cleaner such as this. You can set the modes there, so this is normal, and you can change that to strong performance with the vacuum performance. So the maximum is the 3000 PA, as I've mentioned, and you have the wash mop mode uh, recall to get it to send it back if you want to do that. Now, most of this stuff, in fact, pretty much all of it, apart from the advanced settings, you can do from that screen with the base station that I've already shown you before. So there are firmware updates. You've got a lot of different settings in here that you can adjust. I won't go into all of them. So you've got the accessories that will tell you that when you need to change those. So you just get a, a little bit of information here on how many hours remaining until you need to replace the mops because eventually these things are going to wear out, of course. So that's pretty standard. That's the same with other robot vacuum cleaners, of course. General settings, so going into this, you have your high altitude mode, stairless mode, you can enable that. If you're not gonna be using this on different levels, then put that on because it won't need to then detect for any falls or drops or anything like staircases. It'll go up any lips and access different areas that you'd want it to do. Now you can get it to automatically add the detergent. You can enable that, do not disturb mode. Corner cleaning frequency, so you can put that on to off or every seven days, so just have it once a week or every day. I've got it set to every day at the moment because I was recording some of the clips, so that's why I did that. Drying intensity, you can adjust that. Carpet cleaning, so you can customize this here too. 
uh, to avoid it, to power up uh, is what I want it to do, uh, or just go across it or completely ignore the maps. So it's up to you what you want to set there for that. I think powering up is the best, so that's going to put it into the carpet cleaning pro mode, 3000 PA, and just get the maximum amount of dirt out of those carpets. It lifts the mops up, so it's not going to be a problem. So you've got other straightforward standard settings there that I will not go into. And now to quickly recap here, so this model, I think it covers it all. We've got the great app support, multi-level support, LiDAR mapping is very accurate. It does have the edge swing for cleaning the edges with mopping really well in the Frio mode. It's got the AI dirt sense again in Frio mode when it detects that the floor or certain areas are a little bit dirty than normal, it will continue to clean or continue to mop and it will get them a lot cleaner than other brands that would probably just go over it a single time head back to the station, then clean their mops. Vacuuming performance, because it has a traditional style brush for a robot vacuum cleaner, which is, of course, your rubber sweepers, then your bristles, it lifts up dirt here, and long hair especially, so much better than those models, because I just found the rubber only brushes can be not really that good at lifting up, uh, especially very fine cat hair. I find it would still be stuck to mats and carpets, but this model here does a really good job. And the floors have just been looking very good, really clean, especially our white floor, fantastic. So I'm really happy the results of this unit here. And with the base station, the only thing I can really criticize about it is, of course, it doesn't have an auto empty feature for the dustbin. So you have to go along and empty this out. The good news is it's quite a large dustbin, 480 milliliters. It's a lot larger than most of the robot vacuum cleaners, the recent ones that I've been covering. And the station here, I love the fact that you can, if you want to, you can connect up clean water and waste water to this with an optional kit. So you never have to empty the water tank and the dirty water tank yourself. It'll do it all from there. And that touch screen at the top, large, it's very clear, it's very bright, it's fast, it's responsive. You don't even need the application. You can just do it all from the top screen, which is very handy. So there we go. That's the full story of the Nawal Frio. Thanks a lot for watching this video.